Hello everybody, Peter of England. The next video in the sequence that I uh, previously warned about, um, I'm temporarily uh, putting that to one side because I'm going to cover this, um, this topic today um, because I haven't posted in seven days and that is because I got a, a strike from YouTube. Um, it was on medical misinformation. Now, I am sure many of you appreciate over the last three years, there is a lot of medical misinformation out there. Um, and so I took the trouble of going on to the community guidelines uh, roster on the, the YouTube site and having a look uh, at what medical information is deemed to be. And to my great surprise, um, it is only concerning really any statements that contradict the World Health Organization or lo local uh, health um, agencies um, worldwide on one topic and one topic only. And that is, I'll let you guess what, because it's almost uh, irrelevant to say the word these days because everybody would understand what the, um, the medical misinformation um, uh, ideologues would, would be um, we're talking about generally. So with that in mind, um, I'm just going to touch on a few things because I think as we progress into 2023, we're coming up to the end of the year now, uh, as we go into 2023, I think a lot more uh, emphasis will I be placing on um, ways to help and heal all of those individuals out there that have been subject to various, um, shall we say, trauma that's been particularly caused over the last, the last three years. Now, there are a whole range of illnesses and sicknesses and maladies that people suffer from. And in the great part, though, what we need to start to address is a, a slightly new way, not slightly, but a, a, a dramatic turn, I would say, in the way we think about illness. Today's medical profession, and if I would look at this now from uh, an educational perspective, not in any way condemning the medical authorities that reign supreme around the world, um, I would say that there has to be two sides for us to consider. There's the conventional allopathic way of looking at ill health or disease or sickness, and that is to look at the, the, the human body as a, as a car, uh, for example whereby if something goes wrong with a part of the body, then you treat it. If it's a scratch, you get a body repair agency to, to look at it. Um, if it's something like the distributor cap, or if it's something wrong with the pistons, then you just simply get them replaced. So this is an old, outdated attitude, I think, because not much is taken into account as to the role of the mind involved in all sickness and illness. So don't forget, the body does not have the ability to act autonomously. This is one of the f major problems that people um, suffer from in this world of illnesses that we seem to, 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 to live in, uh, which are getting greater and more extensive each day. And the fact is that the body cannot solve puzzles on its own. Uh, it can't dream. There's a whole range of things the body cannot do. And it is the mind. It's the function of the soul or the mind, or if you would like to say the spirit that occupies or inhabits the body that is the main driver. This is ex extensively proven in many instances by the fact, for example, in, in China, people can elect for a normal anesthetic to uh, be administered to them while they undergo uh, quite um, intensive uh, surgery, or they can opt for hypnotherapy or acupuncture in many cases. So there are other ways and other means outside of the Western world which are perfectly normal and perfectly uh, happily accepted, but we need more and more discussion on what's going on here. So, for example, with the YouTube guidelines on medical information, if you go there, there is, um, there is nothing but warnings on one topic and one topic only. And you cannot uh, dissent from the WHO's direct guidelines or the CDC's guidelines on the treatment, prevention, the diagnosis, the transmission, or even the existence of you-know-what. Now, why I think this is borderline 
uh, it's borderline criminal on the degree of censorship because if it doesn't allow free speech, if it doesn't allow both sides of the argument to be uh, portrayed, then uh, in my situation now, for example, how do I know how far or where I can talk freely? I can't. One of my uh, videos, uh, which you can now look at again, which was taken down uh, unbeknownst to me because I just hadn't gone through the 240-odd videos on the, on the channel, was about um, pay your mask fine with, uh, that was for uh, when the lockdowns and when the mask uh, mandates were obligatory in some countries, I suggested to pay the mask fine with a Weir Bank check. Now, what happened there is I was supposedly in violation of community guidelines. Uh, the, 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 um, the video was taken down. I appealed against it and it was reinstated. So how do I know other videos of mine that have uh, been taken down? Uh, if I appealed against the decision, would they be reposted? And so if they were taken down, but then allowed back on, what had they or hadn't they done wrong? So it's a very, very gray area. And for content creators on YouTube that want to actually begin to talk about some of the more, um, the more progressive steps to take us beyond now the last three years, there is a bit of a dilemma. So we need new ways of thinking. And what we should be looking at is some of the people who've been in charge of um, let's just use the United States for an example uh, of the medical welfare of the populations within that country over, let's say, the last 40 years, mentioning no names, what we find is a massive, massive increase in ill health. Now, if you go and do a search on Google and have a look at what the, um, the, the, um, the most um, incremental increases are for ill health or subjects for ill health within the United States um, over the last 20 years or 30 years, it will actually try and give a portrayal that people are much healthier these days. But we see that the astronomical rise in the number of people suffering from various ailments from autism, diabetes, uh, heart attack and stroke, um, opioid and fentanyl abuse, depression, and mainly psychiatric illnesses have gone off the charts. Um, so we have to ask ourselves with the obesity and with the depression and the reliance on drugs, um, what's happening here? Has the body been treated uh, adversely for all this period of time or are other factors at play? So we need to start looking at ways of curing sicknesses, curing illnesses, other than putting various drugs and potions uh, produced by Big Pharma into the body. So that's not to say that they are wrong or doing anything that is against the law, but I think what they're doing is, unfortunately, starting from their cure uh, allopathic therapy um, suggestions and marketings uh, from a door that is already open behind them. So they need to start isolating the reason or the cause behind why people are ill, not simply just trying to treat the effects. So we've had Big Pharma in the past say that things were, were good for us when they weren't. Um, smoking was okay. Um, DDT as a, um, as a, a, a repellent for um, insects or other uh, ailments. Was, was perfectly good, and it wasn't. Thalidomide, we had the big thalidomide scare in, I think, the 1960s in the United Kingdom. Uh, ch uh, children, babies being born without limbs. Uh, we had massive uh, programs promoting the uptake of, uh, of, of dairy products, both milk and eggs in the United Kingdom, and this was all to do with um, increasing calcium uptake. So all in all, um, we've had a very, very um, uh, checkered pattern of all the drugs that have been administered or suggested as being safe, but later being proven unsafe and withdrawn. And if you want to go and have a look, go to the FDA site on what's called recalls, market withdrawals and safety alerts. And that will give you some indication of the extent of this, this type of misinformation. So 
where do we go from here? Who would I suggest you look towards for the future of your health? Let's look, for example, at the situation regarding um, uh, arterial disease, myocarditis. Go and look at the work of people like Dr. Tom Levy, who is a great proponent of the um, uptake or um, increased uh, ingestion of vitamin C. And all the studies that have been conducted have shown that in various, in, in many very cases, that the blockage of the arteries are not caused by cholesterol um, um, blockage, but are caused by a breakdown of the internal wall of the vein or the, 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 the artery, which causes then the cholesterol to patch or accumulate there. You make your own mind up on whether the veracity of that statement is, is, is correct, but he's a board-registered cardiologist, knows his business, and has been proposing these cures for a long, long time. If we're then looking to um, another interesting aspect of medical health, um, from the time that COVID-19 was, uh, was should we say, isolated or diagnosed in the earlier part of uh, January 2020 until the production of a vaccine was rolled out by the large big pharma companies we had around about 10 months 10 or 12 months before they actually had something on the board and they were in the process of manufacturing these billions of doses which have supposedly now put us into a soap bubble of protection my question to all of you out there and anyone else who is uh, is prescient of mine should be asking the question. Let's look at cancer. Cancer has been there. It's not a back number. It's becoming more prevalent. More people are suffering from it, from blood cancer, which is leukemia, right the way through all the metastatic states that it presents itself in. And yet we've got no cure. We aren't even close to it. Now, why? With all the investment, with all the research, with all the dedicated medical teams around the world looking at it, we're still just either going in and butchering people and then giving them chemotherapy and radiotherapy. If they can come up for a cure for something so elusive as the COVID-19 virus, then why hasn't there been any progression in the form of cure or major treatment for cancer? Very good question. Is it because they don't want there to be a cure? And who is they? I'll let you decide on that. If you want to look at where some possibilities are lying here for, uh, for, should we say, the increased prevalence of cancer in human beings, then go and have a look at the work of people like Dr. Tullio Simoncini. He is an expert in medicine in Italy. Uh, he's come up with some very, very good protocols. I'm not saying here that they treat cancer because I am sure that would be an infringement of the medical disinformation uh, uh, process that YouTube might, might varnish onto me. But go and have a look. What seems to be prevalent here is also if you look at the Vedas, um, that's the, the, the Vedic teachings uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, you need to go and have a look and see how the, the ancients described this thing called cancer. Why is it called cancer in the first place? Does it resemble the claws of a crab? And what also resembles the claws of a, a crab in the fungi kingdom? And that is something called Candida albicans. Everybody knows about Candida. It's the white stuff on the tongue in the morning when you get up. It seems like it's a... a, a, um, a, a, a a symptomatic part of everybody's lifestyle. It exists in everyone. However, what has been found is that in every single instance of a tumor appearing in the human body, where you find tumorous cancer, you also find candida albicans. And what the conventional allopathic surgeons and scientific community would say is it's just opportunistic. It's there because the cancer's there. But could we suggest otherwise that it is actually Candida albicans that seems that it has been maybe genetically modified, uh, whether naturally or by accident? Could it have been in a lab? I don't know, because things like that couldn't possibly happen. To make it more prevalent, more uh, voracious and more um, destructive to the human, the human cause. 
So these are some of the areas that I think we should start to look at to start re-examining the ways we treat and diagnose and look at illnesses. And one of the greatest um, proponents of this new way of associating, as the ancients used to think, that the mind is the central cause. The soul or the mind in ancient Greece was the way that you treated the, the, um, the disease or the sickness or the, in, 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 um, the illness or the malady. So that, as I would suggest, is the way we have to go. If you want to look at the, the work of a, uh, of a very influential and I think uh, far-thinking um, medical practitioner uh, who is a medical expert, therefore his credentials cannot be challenged. Um, and that's a guy called Dr. Stefan Lanker. Um, he has a uh, website. I'll put it down in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the comment section, sorry, or in the description for this video. And that is called Vision, wissenschaftplus.de. And on that site, he explains his ways of alternative thinking, his ways of diagnosing. He is a, a virologist, or was. Um, he is also a marine biologist and has spent his life dedicated to the research of these topics on which we are talking now. What you will also find is that the, um, the big tech companies and the, um, should we say, um, local medical agencies tried to discredit him because what he did is he offered a hundred thousand euro uh, reward to anyone that could prove that a virus, a particular virus, had been isolated. I think it was the measles vir virus or it could have been polio. I'm not sure. Look it up. Um, and what happened is in the first instance in the lower court, some doctor or a, a relation of a doctor brought the case against him to show, hey, look, it is perfectly provable that the virus has been isolated. Look, these are the medical records. However, what Lanker proved, uh, sorry, subsequently, so the lower court found against him and said that he had to pay the 100,000 euro. However, on appeal in the B. BGH, the higher court or the highest court available, um, this was I think in the region of Stuttgart, it was found that in fact Lanker's um, hypothesis had not been um, eradicated and that in fact only artifacts or representations of the virus had been found and therefore the court upheld in his favor and that's where it still stands. He proved his case, but everything now gets buried. And this was, I think, six or eight years ago now. Everything's got buried under a, 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 a valance or a quilt of disinformation. So I would go and look at these individuals. Uh, I would look at the work. Um, I would now like to then bring this to an end by saying, very soon, for those people who are following this channel, even though the, the view numbers are still quite low, um, in the new year, in 2023, I propose to launch a website that is going to give you some alternative uh, mindset appraisals and alternative solutions whereby you can start to do what you should be doing all along, and that is to introduce the spiritual aspect into your daily life where you can begin to prove that the mind is far superior to the body when it comes to healing modalities. So it will be mind over matter, there will be instructional uh, help included, and we will also maybe try and bring uh, us into a, a situation long past now the COVID um, uh, three-year, uh, should we say, uh, insurgency, whereby we may be able to have meetings again and we can go through these, 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 these healing modalities face to face. So thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button and please uh, subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell and pass this video on to any people you think might find it of interest. Peter of England saying thank you.